Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And we're going to look today at the quality of the Monoprice MP10 printer, a relatively new, about a month old printer from Monoprice, and how we went from this disaster of a print to this pretty good print. Okay, stay tuned. Let's learn something together. The Monoprice MP10 is really a very interesting printer. It's 300 by 300 by 400, about the same size as a Creality CR10, and it has good specs. It has a filament detection system. It has a heated removable print bed. It has, in fact, a removable hot end. A number of very interesting things. And I was interested to see how well it stood up to testing. The very first print I did using Hatchbox PLA, that's very important, we'll see in a minute, uh, was of this cat, which came on their SD card. Then, in order to have a benchmark, a base to start from, I went and I sliced a model, specifically the Kickstarter calibration model, and I print sliced it on the PC version of Cura, because that's the only version they supply and it failed miserably. Now I switched to white filament because I thought it'd be easier to see defects than in the black. It failed terribly. Now this white filament is interesting because it came with my Prusa i3 MK3. Um, I ordered it, an additional roll of filament in white. This was not Prusa mint. This was some generic white filament. And in fact, Prusa also came with a generic roll of gray filament. We'll look at that in a minute. So I began to attempt to tune this profile. Now, since I really work on a Mac, I took and I started with a, the current version of Cura. I copied the profile for a Monopros Price Select Mini. We'll, I'll explain why in a few minutes. I edited the machine characteristics and I started to print. And the prints I got were terrible. Um, this is a calibration cat. It's severely under extruded. Um, I struggled with that for a long time. Then just to see what was going on, I went and I printed something else in Hatchbox Black. Um, and I printed one of the calibration cats in Hatchbox Black. It came out very nice. A little bit of a problem, this is a later one. A on the initial one, there was a little bit of a problem on this overhang, but it came out very, very nice. So the white filament is under extruding. The black filament is printing nicely. Now the black filament is Hatchbox. The white is unknown. So I... Um, decided to try a third filament. And at that point, I tried the Prusa Gray, but I only printed very small items because I was looking at eliminating stringing. Um, the initial test was mediocre. It's actually one of these two. I think it was this one. Um, and I found that these very, very narrow points on this calibration model are difficult. So I went to the stringing calibration model that a number of people on the internet have been using, uh, specifically Maker Muse um, and Filament Friday. Both those channels use this model or a similar model. Um, and I was able to tune retraction, and all of the values will be um, in a slide deck attached, able to tune, tune retraction until it came out very, very good. So I had something that looked like it was tuned. I tried to print another white model. It failed again. So finally, I went back to um, black. I printed another one, it was successful. And then I tried Hatchbox um, in the pink color, and that was also successful. So here's what my conclusion is. Um, I thought there's probably just something wrong with this roll of filament. But then I took that roll of filament and I printed a calibration cat on my Ender 5 and it came out perfectly. Now, when I watch the 
MP10, I notice that the extruder is slipping at times. In other words, the gear will be turning, but the filament won't be moving. There was no adjustment on that extruder, so there's no way really to compensate for that. Then I looked at the extruder a little more carefully, and I noticed the extruder is really the same as the Select Mini extruder, except the Bowden tube on this printer is much longer. So my conclusion was that I could only go so far in tuning this printer with that extruder and specifically with the factory supplied Bowden tube. So I continued my tuning work using Hatchbox PLA um, and I was able to get um, a relatively nice calibration model. There's a bit of stringing at the top, um, but I've actually measured this model and I've also measured the calibration cats and um, they come out really very close. This is 19.91 millimeters in that dimension and 19.89 in this dimension. So slightly under extruded. Then I did one more test. I marked a spot on my filament that was 100 millimeters from where it enters the extruder. And I went to the printer and manually, in this case I used OctaPrint, but you could also use Cura directly connected to the printer. I manually extruded 100 millimeters. I did that five or six times. And I found that somewhat randomly, the printer was under extruding from anywhere from 20 to 40%. Once again, indicates that there's something wrong either in the extruder or the Bowden tube or the amount of pressure created in the hot end. So using compliant filament, such as Hatchbox, you can get a pretty good print. Using difficult filament, such as this generic white PLA, I'm not sure what it is, that does print perfectly fine on my Ender and my Prusa, um, you cannot get a good print. So my conclusion for right now is um, I'm not sure. Uh, a $400 printer in today's market should print reliably with pretty much any PLA. Couple other observations. Number one, I had a little trouble with things sticking to the print bed. Um, uh, just putting a drop of magic goo on the print bed solved that. I don't mind doing that. The overall um, structure of the printer, in other words, is it easy to work on? Is it easy to get to things? Was very, very good. So the second part of this series will be that I've ordered an all-metal extruder and a Capricorn, Capricorn, a Capricorn Bowden tube. Those are both considered higher quality than what ships on this printer. That would be in total about maybe $30, $40 of parts. I'm going to be installing those and testing this again. So right now, I know that if you print in Hatchbox, or in fact, I've also done a print now using Sea Tree white filament. I wanted to make sure it wasn't something about the color. That printed fine. So well, any of the major name filaments, it appears, that have good quality control will work. But if you get off the mainstream a little bit, I'm not sure what that Prusa filament was, and I have no desire to try something more exotic like a, a flexible filament or um, PETG at this point. But vanilla PLA from a good vendor appears to be okay. So will I, will, do I recommend this printer? Not sure yet. So far, the results I get on a $320 Ender 5 are better than the results I'm getting on this $400 MP10. By the way, I'm taking one for the team. As soon as I start swapping parts out on this printer, I can no longer return it under warranty in a mono price. Uh, but this will, worst comes to worst, become my printer that I hack at. Okay, folks, thanks for watching. Remember to like, share this video, subscribe. Let's learn something together. <laughs>